when I get into these conversations about global warming and carbon dioxide and CO2, uh, I, I feel that I come from it from a completely different perspective than most people. Um, because I, I have a background in, in mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering. And one thing, for whatever reason, where I went to, to university, the curriculum actually had a lot of thermodynamics and, uh, it was. It had a heavy thermodynamics and just, I guess, thermal studies. I don't know division or emphasis for whatever reason. So, one thing we learned a lot about was combustion. So, my whole life, I you know, I I know how car engines work. I know how combustion works. I know how power plants work. I know how electricity is made. Uh, and yeah, you burn fossil fuels to uh, create energy, right? And you burn fossil fuels to drive down the street. Um, and it takes a lot of energy to move like a car to, to move any car down the street takes a ton of energy. I think a lot of people don't understand. Uh, they just don't realize how much energy that takes compared to powering a light bulb. <laughs> Moving a car down the road at 60 miles an hour is it's an order of magnitude or maybe two orders of magnitude, which means times 10 um, more energy to, to power something of that size. Cars weigh 3000 pounds plus or minus a thousand pounds. So to get, imagine trying to push your car at 60 miles an hour. Just think about that. It'd take a lot of energy. And the funny thing is a lot of cars are over-engineered and they, they actually produce way more energy than they need to, to, to achieve 60 miles per hour, but that's another story. So it takes a lot of energy uh, to move a car. And so when we think about energy and we think about combustion, we burn fossil fuels to make this happen. And so I always go down to the chemistry. And I say, okay, uh, when you burn octane, that's gasoline, that's what you use for most car engines, uh, you combine octane with air, ambient air from the outside, and you compress it, you spark it, and it blows up in, inside your engine piston, pushes your, pis your piston down. This is an overly simplified way to look at it. And that piston turns a crankshaft, which turns your gearbox, which turns axles and pushes your car down the road. And then you're caught, you're, 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 you're doing these explosions like many a minute, right? Lots and lots of explosions a minute to, to make your car uh, move forward. And what happens after the, the, the octane and the, the gasoline and the air explodes is it turns into carbon dioxide, water, and NOx. And NOx is just nitrogen and oxygen but different variants of, of that. There's NO, there's one oxygen with one nitrogen, one, two oxygens with one nitrogen, three oxygens with nitrogen. We just call it NOx because it's a simplification. But the main components of combustion are carbon dioxide and water. The water part has always been very interesting to me because no one really talks about like all the water we create from combustion. We're, we're very fixated on carbon dioxide. And I think we make more, yeah, we make more water than we do carbon dioxide every time we do combustion. Okay. The second thing to realize is if you burn a gallon of gas, you, let me see what I had in my notes here. Uh, so for every gallon of, of gasoline you burn, you convert 14 to 20 gallons of breathable air into carbon dioxide. And when you think about a gallon of, of, of carbon dioxide, you have to think about it in a liquefied form, basically, because... I want, you have to understand that's a lot of carbon dioxide that you're creating. So the, the kind of where I'm going at here is that we're converting a lot of oxygen out of the air into carbon dioxide and water NOx. So um, and when you start thinking of it like that, you're like, wow, we're replacing breathable air or the oxygen in air out of this alarming rate with a lot of carbon dioxide and water NOx. And not only is my car doing this, right, uh, all the cars on Earth are doing this every day, and they're constantly running. And so we have all these little machines all over Earth just converting breathable air into carbon dioxide, water, and NOx. It's also converting the, the octane, too. And when you think about that, and then not only is it happening 24 hours a day all over Earth, it's happening, it's been doing, we've been doing this for 100 years, and we're doing it more than ever. Um, and so when you think about that, you're like, wow, we have this, like, think of like this huge sewing machine on earth and it's just like chomping away 
on the air. It's like sucking in the air and spitting out carbon dioxide. So we're replacing the chemistry of the atmosphere. And so the next thing is, well, if you're a real skeptic or something, you might go, well, how, how, we should be able to measure this, right? This should be obvious. And it's true. We actually do measure this. There's a famous laboratory on Mauna Kea in Hawaii where they measure uh, the the ratios, the parts per millions of, of, of different components in the atmosphere. We actually measure in many different places on Earth. And you will see that over time, <laughs> since we've been measuring this, carbon dioxide has been increasing and O2 has been decreasing in, in, the, in the atmosphere. So... To make it really simple, do you really want less oxygen in the air over time? If you have kids or grandkids or you know you're going to have grandkids, you're like, wow, maybe in 100 years there's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be less oxygen for them, right? Maybe that's concerning. And I'm not talking about climate change or temperature or wildfires or melting ice sheets. I'm just talking about the, the composition of the atmosphere. Maybe that should be the title of this. Um... And that's what I want people to think about. I want people to think about the chemistry and what, more specifically, the stoichiometry of what happens with combustion. Um, and, and in the whole global warming, climate change debate talks, there's more to it than that. There's, you know, cutting down rainforests. There's, uh, uh, you know, the livestock industry. But I'm just talking about combustion because this is very obvious to me. This is what I see. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and I understand that, you know, there's different, uh, the, there could be s periods of the sun that are, uh, where the sun's going to be more active and, and heat the earth more, or our orbit might be shifting and we don't really know that. And there's all these things that can contribute to temperature changes on earth, right? But I'm just focused on, on, on the combustion part, um, because I, that is something we really have measured very well. Matter of fact, car engines are designed because we know this stuff so well. We size and design engines based on the fact that we know how uh, to combust octane with air. We know the specific ratios. We know the amounts. We've, we've measured this throughout through hundreds of years, over 100 years. We actually know how much fuel we've sold. So we know how much fuel we've converted into carbon dioxide and water and uh, NOx. So we have, we have this all on lock, right? This is, this is something we know very well. There's, there's a lot... That's what's great about, I think, this perspective is everything is very easily measured and accounted for. Um, so, yeah, why, why do we want less? I don't want less oxygen. I'm sure mo no one wants less oxygen in the atmosphere. Um, so moving forward, you know, what do we do? Well, how do we solve this problem or, or do we not care? Like, oh, let's just wait till it becomes a, a problem. I guess it, it will be <laughs> when, it's, when people have a hard time breathing, we'll definitely jump on this, on solving the problem. Um Okay, so I decided to break up this cast into a, a few different videos. Um, so in the next episode, I'm going to talk about more about um, what some solutions could be and, and, and to continue on this train of thought on how to think about this and you know, and not get into like the fear mongering or, or the clickbait stuff, but to really think about it, you know, objectively and, and, and to really think about the risks involved and the risk calculations. So stay tuned for the next episode.